Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about the strut and tie. What's the concept and explanation in very simple words. We especially talking about reinforced concrete structures and the strut and tie problem. Suppose we have a beam on the point load and sitting on two simple supports. The distance between supports are L and depth of the beam is D. In general, for bending design, we're going to apply that one and we have bending diagram that applies the top side in, that makes the top side in compression and the bottom side in tension. So we have this distribution of stress and so easily we're going to design for bending and for reinforced concrete structure we're going to apply reinforcement at the bottom side to take any tension and for top side we're going to have concrete to take the compression load and if it's not enough we're adding some reinforcement in compression but when the ratio of l on d is going under 2 Bending is not happening very easily, in a simple word. Uh, this ratio is not clear in global standards and technical documents, but we can say that L on D, it just some reports on some papers, is based for is the base for definition of deep beams and bending beam. So if we have this ratio in a beam, we can say that that the beam with tension bar, compression bar, and the concrete is enough for that load. In that case, we have strut and tie problem. Strut means the member in compression, and tie member in tension. So we should define where is the where is in tension and where is in compression in this beam. Strut and tie is applying this type of loading compression so this compression here cause tension so this area will be in compression compression and tension The compression side here, let's go for more detail. Will be the concrete part on the compression. And same for the other side, concrete part on the compression. In general, we can say that the concrete is very strong for the com compression, but still depend depending on this angle that is defined by the support points and the strength of concrete and the applied load, sometimes we need to have extra reinforcement to take that compression. Uh, still, we, need, we, may need have, we may need some ties for shear because the failure at this part are two sides. One is just like prism, and one is like bottle. For bottle shape, generally, we need to have ties to take the shear and expansion, uh, actually bursting the concrete part. For the tension part, we need to have tension bars. So for tension, for uh, strut and tie, we're going to have this type of reinforcement for compression side and this type of reinforcement for tension side. But you know that it is almost impossible to have this arrangement of reinforcement, reinforcement in a beam, so we're going to replace it with vertical and horizontal bars. But for tension part, we will have the same tension.
So this one is for this to take this area we and generally for compression and tension we have two limits ultimate limit st state and serviceability limit state ultimate is for strength ultimate limit state is just dealing with strength and what's the applied load what's the capacity of this section but for serviceability we're going to check generally for cracking and just surprisingly service limit state is governing in strut and tie models so if you're going to check just uls ultimate limit state it is not enough in most of the cases and you have to go for serviceability limit state and controlling the cracking so it may need more reinforcement or stronger reinforcement here so where we have this issue General areas are corbels. We may have one column and very short extension with some load on that. Generally, very big load. Something like crane edges sitting on this part. So in this case, we can say that this P in distance of E applies PE bending and so we can have compression on top side and tension on top side and compression at the bottom side negative bending but it's not the solution for corbel generally we're going to have strut and tie model for this one so this side is going to be in tension and this side going to be in compression so for compression we need to have reinforcement in this direction and for tension we need to have reinforcement in this direction but as i said before it is almost impossible to have this arrangement of reinforcement in this short distance so we're going to have vertical and horizontal reinforcement the next area we have this problem is uh, this issue uh, actually we need to check this issue it's just for foundation over piles we may have foundations and we may have just some piles that are very close let's say one meter two meters still we need to check the dimensions of the beam and the spacing between the supports and in this case we may have this issue if we go for just bending you will in most of the cases you, you may have just one I mean, that is some layer of re reinforcement in tension and let's say some layer of reinforcement in compression and that's it but if you go and check for strut and tie model you will see that you will have very big strut effect and tie effect so it means that for such a foundation you need to have arrangement for compression and tension that is generally horizontal and vertical reinforced for sometimes for edge foundations we may have this one we may have pile around here and load applied at the edge so the same concept here and we may have compression or strut and tie and again for deep beams as i said for deep beams the best option is always to have strut and tie check. Doesn't matter if we have just supports around here or if we have just some bending support here. And the rigid support here, still we have the same P. And in this case, we may have just bending effect or strut and tie is the most effective design for this one we will have t and 
compression and again we will have horizontal and vertical reinforcement but remember this is extra check if you're not sure that the member is acting in bending always it's better to check for strata and tie as well and the main thing in strata and tie is making sure that we have you have enough development length for tension bars because it is in tension and it may slip so if you don't provide development enough development length it may slip and it loses the it fails under the load and the whole system is getting broken and also make sure that you have good anchorage for reinforcement bar for tension bars let's say for core belt you have this tension bar you need to have some development length if, it, if it's not enough you need to have you need to provide extra length to have development length to make sure that this part is strong enough for that tension load okay that is very basic concept for strata and tie model